Good to us on ABC6 starts now with this breaking news alert. And, and good morning. Thanks for waking up with us on this Tuesday, May 28th. I'm Kurt Ludlow. And I'm Jessica Ralston. It has been a long night for so many people across Ohio. Tornadoes touching down in Dayton that we know of for mm -hmm. sure. Possibly Pickaway County. A lot of damage in Hawking County. Let's get straight to Buck. Yeah, good morning, everyone. And uh, the National Weather Service is going to go ahead and say that it is confirmed there in Pickaway County because of the debris signature that we were able to pick up. So we were actually able to see the fact that there was debris flying around with the storm that moved its way through Pickaway County earlier this morning. Things have been pretty quiet the last few hours. We have a couple of storms there in far northern Ohio, but the big story is the cleanup from these storms that raced across the state last evening. And we are still dealing with some damage reports uh, out there this morning with everyone cleaning up. But the worst of the storms looks to be out by Dayton. I know that the city of Dayton is planning on doing a press conference coming up in about 30 minutes from now. So we'll be able to hear from them their extent of the damage, what the game plan is going forward here. It is a warm and humid morning as you step outside some of kind of like a gray cloud sky, not completely clear. Here's that graphic I was working on a little bit ago when uh, we came to the main forecast not too long ago. Best chance of storms if you are heading out to Mirfield Village today for the practice rounds or the pro-am tomorrow is mainly going to be in the second half of the day. I think today's fairly dry until we get in late afternoon tomorrow. A little earlier, we could see some storms working their way in. So if you are heading out today or tomorrow, I think today it will be a little drier than what it will be tomorrow. Coming up, we're going to take you into the rest of the week and look ahead to the Memorial Tournament itself. Right now, let's get a check of those roads out there with Katie. Alrighty, so 631 right now, and I do want to show you exactly what we're looking at in terms of our road closures and accidents we have right now. So this is just recently been updated. 23 southbound closed near Pittsburgh Road. We were also seeing some other areas being affected in Circleville. This is the only one you need to worry about right now. Power lines again down in that area. We saw Mike Kilburn there earlier. A lot of damage. They're going to have to definitely take some time to clear that away. As for another uh, issue that we have, this is a disabled truck. 71 southbound at 104. Of course, anything in that stretch um, on the south side definitely going to cause some problems. Not causing any yet, but of course, probably will in the next 10 minutes. And then we're seeing this accident still active out here in Madison County, 70 eastbound at 142. So just something to be aware of as you were heading out this morning. Uh, we're going to check in with Mike Kilburn coming up in a little bit. For now, I'll toss things over to the desk. All right, in just a few hours, the National Weather Service is expected to pay a visit to Laurelville down in Hawking County. One of the places that dealt with a tornado overnight, Mike McCarthy, he's just about five minutes west across the border into Pickaway County. And what is the latest there, Mike? Wow. Jessica, a lot of damage here. And now that the sun has come up, we have moved to the other side of the house we have been at all morning long. And you can get a much clearer picture now of just how serious the damage is. I mean, just look at the yard. There is debris pretty much anywhere you look. And I want to zoom you up to the roof of the house because you can now see the significant damage done there. Part of the home that you cannot see is also buckled, so there is some serious structural damage to this house. Guys, I just talked to a woman who says she was in this house when this happened. She says her dad's a pastor, they were here, and get this, her brother is a meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Florida. He watches the weather up here pretty regularly for them. He called them and gave them a three-minute warning you got to seek shelter. You got to make sure you get to the storm cellar. And that family did here at this home with just really seconds to spare as this now we believe tornado came through this area. All the windows you see here are intact, but the woman says the window at their storm shelter, storm cellar, I should say, shattered. And there was an injury, a slight injury from that broken glass. But clearly you'll see a lot of downed trees here. We know firefighters also have been out all night long here in Pickaway County. And we understand down in Hawking County as well, checking on the people who live at homes like this one where there was significant damage. We have no reports of any serious injuries and no deaths. This is a new look at some of the other damage we are seeing here as well. We thought initially that was a house straight back there where we're zooming in. But the family here says that's a barn and clearly it has a lot of damage as well. Jessica and Kurt, the family who lives at this property where we are live, does have some horses and clearly those horses got quite a scare as this all happened, but we understand all the horses are okay as well. They have been taken to a neighboring property and the family who lives here, the, the mom and dad, they are now staying at a hotel 
their daughter was the person we just talked to and they just came to pick up some belongings, what they could, so they can kind of make do as they try to figure out what they're going to do next. That daughter was hesitant to speak on camera. Can you blame her, given everything they've been through? So we were respectful of her wishes not to talk sure. to us on camera. But as we get more information, we will continue to keep, keep you rather updated. We'll send things back to you. It's an incredible, incredible story. I mean, the phone call. Get in the storm wow. cellar now. Three and they minutes. do, and just a few minutes later, the tornado passes right by. I'm glad they Crazy. picked up the phone that late at night. All right, the uh, worst of this storm hit Dayton, and we're going to take you live north of the city now. And we are all over the map this morning, so this is where we have Alexis Moberger standing by. What have you noticed now since the sun's come up and is really revealing all the damage? Yeah, Kurt and Jazz, now that the sun is up, you really can see this damage. I mean, take a look right now. We're right above Old North Dayton. Just look at the strip mall. It was a family dollar, a Metro PCS. I mean, just look at all of the damage that was done here. You can really see this is a big area that this destructive tornado did hit just uh, around 11 o'clock last night. But even at this point, still 56,000 people still without power. But joining us right now to tell us a little bit more of just the impact of this tornado, uh, this man, Murad, he owns a local family furniture store. Uh, it's right behind us. Tell me, you know, really not much is left of your store. Unfortunately, not a lot is. Um, you know, wake up one more and it was all gone. What is that like? I mean, you put your heart into this, into this store. It's very tragic, but at the same time, you know, it's God's plan. It is what it is. Can't complain. Just got to move on. Hopefully, we'll, next time we'll be stronger. And uh, you've been out here since uh, 1 o'clock this morning. Kind of tell me why some of the fears you had with people kind of coming and taking advantage. Uh, it is, you know, there's a lot of destruction, but then again, there's a lot of free things to take. A lot of people are just coming in, grabbing whatever they can, and leaving. So, I've been out here since about 1 a.m. just to, you know, uh, save whatever we have left. So what is uh what are your next steps kind of from here? Try to move on, build stronger. You know, there's always a tomorrow. Take the chance, get uh get up, get uh, stronger and better. So right now, just kind of making sure what's left isn't taken. Pretty much, yeah. You know, save what we can. You know, at the end of the day, we were been saying, you know, at least you have your health and your family. Of course, yeah. Uh, thankfully, this happened overnight, so nobody was really here. Um, What's damaged is just materialism. Everybody else is safe. Let's just thank God for that. Did you imagine that this would be the damage from everything last night that you were seeing and watching? I lived here for over 10 years. Never thought this would happen. Uh, anything else just uh, after witnessing and having to go through this? Not really. Just breathtaking. Unexpected. Thanks for talking with us. So, Kurt, Jess, you can see it's really affecting a lot of people, not just people with their homes, but even with their businesses here in Old North Dayton. Back to you. Yeah, and it's just terrible that uh, you have to worry about looters, which is really right. what he was talking yeah. about there, because there's stuff blown all over the place, and he wants to protect everything that he had in his store and the mm -hmm. thought that people... We'll come and come out and start taking advantage time. of you at the worst moment of your life is just unbelievable. But wow, what an attitude he yeah. has to say. These are material things. Mm -hmm. We're just grateful that w no one was hurt and we're waking up alive today. And you just build stronger and better. That's it. Wow. And with uh, serious damage overnight, city leaders in Dayton are getting creative. After the break, how they're using something you usually see in the winter to clear debris. And here's a live look at the power outages in Dayton. Dayton Power and Light says more than 10% of its customers, nearly 60,000, are waking up without power. That's customers, meaning the number of people affected is likely even higher. Overnight, the National Weather Service said as many as 5 million people in Ohio were dealing with power outages this morning. Take a look at this. ODOT is using snow plows to clean up debris. This photo taken on I-75 north of downtown. Look at the debris there. ODOT is telling people to stay out of that area. If you have the ABC6 app, then you got tons of push alerts throughout the night. Anytime a watch or warning change, we sent out a new alert to you. As a reminder, even if the power goes out, you can still watch our newscast live on our app. It is free in your app store. Search for WSYX. This severe storm tore through significant chunks of Ohio. And after the break, a look at the damage in Athens County. Katie? 
And we are keeping an eye on a handful of incidents that may impact your morning commute, especially if you're on the south side. We're seeing a disabled vehicle. We also have an accident over here on 23 affecting southbound lanes at 104. So we're going to break this down and see exactly how much this will impact you and exactly what our delays are looking like after the break. At Ohio University in Athens this morning, they're trying to dry out this morning. You'd see a couple of raindrops on the lens there right now, though everything is calm on campus. But you can see it's pretty soaked there this morning. Actually, it's looking very lush and green. <laughs> All right, well, they're lucky to be in that situation right now with so much devastation across Ohio. How are the roads, Katie? So we do have multiple incidents on the south side. I do want to kind of walk you through this because we're going to start seeing some pretty major backups just because of where these are located. So the newest accident, 23 southbound at 104. Right now, things are still in the green in that area. However, we also have a disabled truck, 71 southbound at 104. Obviously, this is if you're coming away from the downtown area, but still not an area for this to happen. We typically see backups in the 71 north and southbound lanes. You can see that we're still yellow right now in those 71 northbound lanes heading towards the downtown area. We have 70 westbound. There's an accident there, right there at 71 and 315 that is uh, causing folks to slow down in that area. As for another road closure that we've been talking about for a good portion of the morning, this was just updated. 23 southbound remains closed in Circleville. It's going to be near Pittsburgh Road because of some power lines that are down in that area. So we're keeping an eye on that as well. As for another accident out in Madison County. This is still active 70 eastbound at 142. There uh, doesn't seem to be any backups in this area as of right now for folks that are making their way in towards 270. But of course, we're going to keep an eye on it. And we'll let you know if that changes guys. All right. Thank you, Katie. As we bring Buck in now, I want to have you set the record straight on tornado warnings. So mm -hmm. I live in Upper Arlington. My weather radio went off. I think it was 1215 or something. I jump out of bed. I run over. It says severe thunderstorm warning. I go back to bed. You're getting Tornado sirens in your neighborhood in Hilliard, right? Yeah. Four. So yeah. explain how that works. So Franklin County did have a tornado warning last night, but it was just the very southern few miles of Franklin County. So the tornado, your weather radio should have went off for the tornado warning, but with the tornado sirens here in Franklin County, they don't do the entire county any longer. They started about two years ago. They'll do just the quadrants since it was only so the southern part of the county. They only sounded off the tornado sirens. I know they went off because when I was driving in, that's when they were going off. I mean, it's eerie yeah. driving, and it's not noon on a Wednesday. It's right. the middle of the night, right. and you know there's potential for a tornado out yeah. there. But they did go off. I mean, I can definitely attest that I was driving to work about 11, In what 15, area? Far southern Franklin County. It went through mainly Pickaway County. That was a storm that went down to Pickaway County. Right. So that explains for people who said, gee, I didn't hear a siren, yeah. or they right. didn't work here. That's not necessarily true. The right. quadrants divide the right into four quadrants Correct. now in the county, and that's how it works now. Yeah, a lot of the counties are starting to do that if they have the capabilities, because you need some technology to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you have the capabilities, then the other people that's not under a tornado warning, they can keep sleeping, mm -hmm. and then they don't get... That's good. Right. I mean, we, we, they went off in Hilliard four times, and yeah. we really didn't, you know, we didn't end up getting anything, but now I do regret I should have gone to the basement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead, she's not. texting me while I'm, I'm like, live what? on air. Personal I needed meteorologist. To know. Right. Like, am I safe? Am I safe? <laughs> am I safe? All right. <laughs> All right. So 10 p.m. news last night, right before the storms hit, I did tease that I was going to do the pool forecast during the 6 a.m. So here you go. Pool forecast today and tomorrow. It is going to be warm and muggy. A little cooler by Thursday and Friday. Let's get right to it here. What we've got on the way. Slight risk for more severe storms in the northern third of Ohio for later today. Tomorrow, it's all across central Ohio for that slight risk, which is what we were in yesterday. And a marginal risk on Thursday. Main threat will be gusty winds. Flooding could be a problem in isolated locations and then also potentially hail and can't rule out the chance of tornadoes. I think today there's actually a slightly better setup for more tornadoes later today. So stay weather aware. It's not widespread, but we will keep you posted. Chance of storms mainly into the late afternoon and evening for us today. Getting to that warm 86 for the high. Current temperature 69 degrees, south winds at 7 miles per hour, so it's warm, it's humid, it's sticky outside. Scattered showers pretty much done now. We've had a few in far northern Ohio, so we're still dry right now, which is good news for the cleanup. But here's future cast through the day today. Sun warming us up pretty quickly. We're already going to be at about 81 by lunchtime. Notice some scattered thunderstorms firing up to the north by late afternoon. That's going to slowly transition closer to central Ohio by 7 p.m., and again, northern third of Ohio will have a lot more energy for storms to develop later today. Could see some to the south, 
Better chance for stronger storms, though, to the north. Here's late this evening and even overnight some lingering showers. Let's go into tomorrow. At any given time tomorrow, at any given location, we could have strong storms. A few passing by to the south here at noon, a few popping up in the afternoon around central Ohio. So make sure to stay weather aware for the next couple of days because we could be dealing with more of a similar situation. 86 for the high today. Today's main threat is going to be late afternoon, evening, and the strongest storms likely north of Columbus. 68 degrees for the overnight low tonight. So staying warm and humid with some lingering showers, maybe a few thunderstorms, and then on and off showers and storms tomorrow. 86 for the high temperature, and then a little lower chance of rain by the time we get into Friday and Saturday in temperatures in the 70s as well. So if you are heading to the Memorial Tournament Friday and Saturday, in my opinion, have the best odds of staying dry the entire time for us for Friday and Saturday. But if you're heading out Thursday in particular, could be dealing with rain for a decent amount of the day today. So obviously we're uh, kind of in cleanup mode this morning from the storms and we'll be checking back in on a lot of the damage that we've been seeing across the state, especially out towards Dayton where that I mean, every time we go and look at that, guys, it's just so impressive. Yep, and it, the damage just gets worse, it seems like, as the uh, sun continues to rise. Well, if you have any photos or videos of the storms or the damage, we'd love you to share them with us. We're talking about anything from overnight, maybe video from your doorbell or security cameras. Open up the ABC6 app, tap on Chime In. Your photos or videos may even end up right here on Good Day Columbus. In just a few hours from now, the National Weather Service will start assessing this damage and the strength of these tornadoes. And the uh, first potential tornado happened about seven hours ago, and then less than an hour later, about three miles away, another funnel cloud hit the ground. Some of the biggest damage from overnight is at a church in Dayton. I have to say it's an act of God that uh, there were no injuries with the young people that were inside the church, even though the, the church receives structural damage that can be replaced. But uh, lives can't, and we, we just thank God that, that they were all safe. A youth group was there inside the church late last night. Mercer County's EMA director says at least seven people are hurt with three in serious condition. And don't forget the uh, lightning strike. Someone struck by lightning last night. Well, in just three minutes, new video of semis flipped in Pickaway County. After the break, how crews got them back upright. Plus, this morning's good day to go. How about that? Crews using tow trucks to upright that semi that flipped over last night in Circleville. Several semis knocked over as those winds blew through Love's Travel Center. Windshields were blown out. Debris was thrown everywhere. We spoke with one driver whose truck was damaged in that storm. Oh, we uh, came out so we can put the landing gear down to keep it steady, but it was already down. There, there are no reports of any injuries, and we don't know how much the damages will cost. All right, it is 656. Let's take you to today's good day to go. We're going to give you a live look right now at Dayton, where a tornado ripped through the area overnight, causing massive damage. A news conference is expected at the top of the hour. Now live pictures from Pickaway County. Another tornado reported here outside of Circleville. The National Weather Service will be out soon to determine just how strong it was. Workers at the DuPont plant catching that tornado on camera in Circleville. A scary sight because you could only see that funnel cloud during the lightning flashes. And we do have more storms on the way for later today and tomorrow. And a slight correction. We're going to get to that right at the top of the hour on Fox 28. And we still have a road closure in Circleville right now. 23 southbound lanes closed near Pittsburgh Road. A lot of down power lines in that area. Crews are working now to get those cleared away. So, of course, we'll keep you updated when that opens up. And that's your good day to go. All right, before we go, here's a look at the uh, light show in downtown Columbus overnight. This is actually a time lapse from our tower cam. Gives you an idea as that uh, storm came through last night. Woke many of you up, I'm sure, around midnight when it first started making its way here. Some pretty big thunder boomers and lightning lighting up our rooms for sure. As exactly. Jess and I have mentioned, we're kind of scared of storms. So mm -hmm. I was lying in my bed at one point with my eyeballs wide open, <laughs> just thinking <laughs> this could be a problem. It was. With one siren, two sirens, three sirens, four sirens. Uh. No sleep for me last uh -huh. night and probably most of you. We'll see you on Fox. Yeah.